Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Bender, and we are about to take a journey into chapter 26.3 for cladistics. All right, so, okay, as I said, cladistics, chapter 26.3, and I am Professor Bender. That is an amazing picture of Professor Bender playing tennis. <clears throat> okay, so, when you hear the word cladistics, most people would think, hmm, that's such a weird word. What does that mean? Well, cladistics is the classification of species based on evolutionary relationships. Now, scientists use cladistics as a method to discriminate among possible phylogenic trees. However, in this um, section, phylogenic trees will now be referred to as cladograms. Now that we have that cleared up, let's continue on to how cladistics uh, discriminates among possible ph phylogenic trees. And we're going to go this way. Okay. So, cladistics compares characters, also known as homologous traits, which may exist in different character states. Okay. Now, an example of a character would be a front limb. And this character may appear in different character states, such as an arm like us humans do, a wing like birds have, and a badly drawn flipper that I drew on paint, and I don't know, fish and dolphins would have flippers. Okay, so I know most of you are pretty confused right now, but I'm going to explain two more terms and I'll clear everything up with a nice diagram. So, uh, for shared pr uh, primitive characters, they're also called uh, simple isomorphies. Um, a shared primitive character is a character that is shared by a group of species and inherited from a distant ancestor older than their last common ancestor. And I believe you guys learned about common ancestors in 26.1 and 2. Okay, next we have a shared derived character, also known as a synopomorphy. Synopomorphy, yep. And a shared derived character is a character that is shared by two or more species or taxa and has originated from their most co recent common ancestor. Now, here's a diagram, and we're gonna sum everything up that I just went over. So, if the character in this cladogram is front limbs, what are the character states? Now, we would look at this cladogram and see that everyone has front limbs A, B, C, D, E, F, G but what are the two states those two front limbs come in and the answer to that is uh, arms like C has and fins like B has okay next question is uh, a shared primitive character is having, in, in this uh, cladogram, is having two eyes. So what would a shared derived character be, and which ancestor would it have come came from? Well, um, it looks like here in this cladogram that... Um, the shared derived character is the fins because the uh, ancestor A does not have a fin but it 
or, but it originated from the most recent common ancestor, uh, the dolphin bee, or whatever this is. There, did the dolphin and the whales most recent common ancestor? So t the answer to that shared derived character would be uh, the fins, because it came from the dolph the, the the bee which is the dolphin and the whale's most common ans most recent common ancestor and that's the definition of a shared derived character next we have something called an in-group and an in-group is a group of species in a cladogram that scientists want to study um, and these in-group species, they always have the same shared derived characters. The out-group is a species or group of species that lacks the derived, that lack the derived character that the in-group have in the cladogram. Uh, the species in the out-group lack the derived character because they diverged from the in-group species before they could obtain that character. So let's clear this up, these, these, two, new, these two new terms up with a nice diagram. Okay, so this is another, another cladogram. So if the salmon, lizard, and rabbit Salmon, lizard, rabbit are the in-group. What species would be the out-group and why? Well, we have the salmon, lizard, and rabbit. That's the in-group. So a species that would be in the out-group would be the lamprey because it lacks the shared derived character of the hinge jaw. Remember how I said that the in-group all have the same shared derived character? So they would all have the hinge jaw, but the but because the lamprey does not have the hinge jaw, it's part of the out group. Um. Yeah. Next, for the in group, what is the shared primitive character, and what is the shared derived character? Well, we just talked about that the salmon, lizard, and rabbit are the in-group. And we said that the, a shared derived character of the three would be the hinged jaw. But a shared primitive character would be uh, a notochord and a vertebrae. And that is because their ancestors, the lancelet, uh, has the notochord and the vertebrae. So the lancelet is their ancestor. The lamprey is the outgroup because it, it diverged uh, during evolution before it could obtain the hinged jaw. And the salmon, lizard, and rabbit are the in group. Now, if you were a researcher, and you wanted to, and you uh, researched all this information, and you wanted to propose a cladogram, you can't just do it and then submit it into the scientific world. You have to follow six steps. The first step is to choose the species in whose evolutionary relationships you are interested in. Uh, second step is to choose characters for comparing the species selected. So remember how in the in our last cladogram front limbs was a character. So they have to think of something like that. Uh, step three would be t to determine if a character state came first and if it's primitive or it came later and it's a derived character. So basically they would have to label their uh, cladogram showing which characters are primitive, which characters are derived, uh, the specific character states. Um, step four 
is to make sure that the cladogram is following uh, the basic cladogram principles and there are, there's three but an example of one of the principles is that uh, each cladogram branch point should have a list of one or more shared derived characters that are common to all species above the branch point unless the character is later modified. Now if you read that sentence and you had a cladogram in front of you it would be easier to understand but it, the, main, the main point of this step 4 is to follow the basic cladogram principles. Uh, step 5 is to choose the cladogram that provides the simplest explanation for the data and this is pretty straightforward if you're going to uh, create a cladogram you want to make sure it, it, it's, it's not bizarre you want to make sure that it's simple and to the point and step six is to create an out group that must be non-controversial controversial in that it shows enough distinctive differences with the in group to be considered a clear out group. Uh, once this is considered a clear out group, it will provide a root to the phylogenetic tree. And what this is saying is um, each each cladogram really needs an, an in group and an out group. And that is what distinguishes everything and and explains all the derived and shared characters. And they the book uses the term that each cladogram needs a root to the phylogenetic tree. And okay, usually scientists they have a lot of cladograms of the same group of species, and they need to figure out which one is the best so they could publish it into the scientific world. So we'll use these three principles. The first is called the principle of parsimony. And that this states that the preferred hypothesis or cl or cladogram is the one that is the simplest for all the characters and their character states. So so that's one thing they would they would use the maximum likelihood method. Uh this one's pretty confusing but I narrowed it down in this presentation. It basically says that a phylogenetic tree that gives a higher probability of, pro of producing the observed data is, is preferred to any trees that gives a, low, a lower probability. So basically it's saying um, the cladogram that is going to produce the observed data better is going to be the one that would be picked over the others. and the last method would be the biasin method and this one basically you'd ask yourself the question what is the probability that a, par that a particular phylogenetic tree is correct given the observed data in a particular evolutionary model so for this one you would just think to yourself based on all this observation does this phylogenetic tree make sense or is there another phylogenetic tree that makes more sense based on the data because remember these scientists they're trying to discriminate against all these phylogenetic trees about the same species so if there's one that that fits all these principles rather than another one then they'll choose that I, I have a lot of this uh, this virtual lecture is really timing down I think I have like 30 seconds but um if you're still confused, I have a lot of useful materials. I have a, uh, I'll be lecturing uh, on Wednesday, the 26th, and um, I have the chapter summary as well, and it's all under my uh, page, uh, in, uh, it's all under my wiki page. So if you have any questions, I hope this helped. I have a few seconds to go on this thing, so I gotta finish this. All right, see you guys.